All right, welcome back. Let's talk about what happens to glucose if the cell is experiencing low oxygen levels. So the glucose is transported into the cell and glycolysis is still going to take place and we're gonna see the glucose is broken down into pyruvate. And then if we have low oxygen conditions, the biochemical pathways are going to remain within the cytosol, meaning it's gonna stay outside the mitochondria. If, however, oxygen levels are high, metabolic pathways will proceed and go on to mitochondria, and then we're going to see ATP produced by oxidative phosphorylation. So it is a pretty efficient process, as, as we already know, one glucose is going to yield about 30 ATP molecules versus if there is no oxygen present and not enough, we will only yield about two ATPs. So when we have the absence of oxygen within the cells, we're going to call this process fermentation, and uh, it happens under anaerobic conditions, so it means absence of oxygen. So what happens in the fermentation, NADH molecule is reoxidized. So, and we're going to look at different types of fermentation pathways to regenerate the NAD molecule. So now the overall yield in this process, the yield of ATP is only going to be two. And the ATP, it's, itself is actually made, or ATP molecules themselves are actually made in glycolysis. So let's take a look at lactic fermentation, and we can see we begin this process by glycolysis. So glucose is broken down into pyruvate. Remember, glucose is a six-carbon compound, so it's cut into two pyruvic acid molecules, two three-carbon compounds. So we had an investment phase and a payoff phase, and the net gain is actually two ATPs. So and since we broke the bond within the glucose, remember the electrons were captured, picked up by NAD plus molecule, which ends up being reduced into NADH. So then the next step, so this was basically glycolysis. And then the next step, we're going to take that pyruvate and reduce pyruvate into lactate, a lactic acid. So you can see now the NADH is oxidized into NAD+. So then H is um, bound to the molecule of lactate. So we didn't have H right here, but now we do. So it means in this process, when we go from pyruvate to lactate, we oxidize NADH so that NAD+, can be used again in the process of glycolysis to generate pyruvate. So this process will continue as long as we can regenerate NAD+, and new glucose molecule comes in to the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, obviously, this is very little ATP, considering that we can make whole 30, and this is just um, pitiful two ATPs. Now, we have alcoholic fermentation. So this is a slightly different pathway where pyruvate is actually converted to alcohol, ethanol. So we're going to see the same process happen. So there's glycolysis, and you can see the ATPs produced here, a couple of ATPs. And then pyruvate is going to be converted to acetaldehyde. And you can see we are losing one of the carbon atoms in the form of CO2. And then acetaldehyde is going to be reduced into ethanol because at this point, this compound is going to be using NADH. So NADH is being oxidized. And then we have the hydrogen that's going to be um, incorporated into this ethanol molecule right here. So ethanol is the alcohol and it's a um, byproduct of alcoholic fermentation besides the carbon dioxide gas.